During this stay at home order, order, many of us have been watching more TV and lots of movies, maybe catching up on some of our favorite shows and discovering new ones. Well, joining us to talk about the making of movie magic is famed director and producer Jesse Torero, here to talk about his history in music video and film production and his new series on Netflix, Nikki Jam El Ganador. Jesse Torero, welcome to Live in the D. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. So your cinema company, um, Cinema Giant, has worked with names like Jennifer Lopez, Cardi B, Chris Brown, Enrique Iglesias, one of my favorites, just to name a few. And you've directed legends like Robert De Niro with a total of 21 billion cumulative streams of your work on YouTube. What has this progression in your career been like? Um, it's been an incredible journey. You know, the first uh, film I worked on was a movie called Juice with Tupac Shakur, where I was just an extra. But I got to see, you know, so many people that looked like me on set, and I didn't know that sort of filmmaking could be a career. And that year, I changed my major in college and started studying theater and studying film and then just sort of hustling and working and building my career ever since then. Wow, and Juice is a classic. So you've been there from the beginning of the, the changing of film being more inclusive. But now tell us about your new series on Netflix that was just released last week in the US about Nicki Jam that you know documents the rise of, of the reggaeton artist. But what will we learn from his journey? Yeah, you know, I think it was um, coming from sort of the hip hop world. I saw the impact that hip hop had in cinema. And when the hip hop music became so big, there were movies that sort of mirrored the feeling of the culture. And um, reggaeton reached, you know, global status, but on television, uh, in film, there's nothing that mirrors the feeling of the music. So there was mm -hmm. so much of a lack of content in the space for like the Latin urban music movement. So I was, you know, always looking for the right projects and working with Nicky Jam on the music video, he sort of told me a little bit about his story. And I was just, you know, blown away by the story and, and, and information that I never knew about him. And I thought that I was always looking for a story that was universal, that had universal themes. So even though it was a Spanish language TV series, the themes in the series were universal. And I knew that a lot of people could relate to it. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's funny because Nikki Jam's videos really tell a story. And, I, and then of course I saw your name on some of them. I hadn't clicked, you know, as I went back and watched a few. So. This is, um, this is gonna be high quality uh, TV that we're all gonna be watching. But Netflix and other streaming services are hugely popular today. They've absolutely blown up. People stream just as much as they watch TV. How do you think that this will impact the future of TV and movies, especially with what we're going through? Um, you know, I think that um, the world has already shifted and people are not really programmed to want to watch something at seven o'clock, at 10 o'clock. They want to kind of wa watch it in, the, you know, at their own time, at their own pace. So I think that um, when the streaming systems came in, it gave a lot more freedom to the filmmakers and to the creatives. And Netflix and um, companies like that, had, you know, took a chance and stood behind something like El Ganador which five years ago, six years ago, would have been so difficult to make, especially from an authentic standpoint. And for me as a Dominican, you know, I've always wanted to put sort of, you know, make sure that I'm pushing the envelope, having come from the general market and working with American artists, I wanted to give like an American sensibility to Latino content. Very nice, very nice. Jesse, what's next for you? Right now, um, you know, I. I from sort of being a fan of reggaeton, it wasn't until recently that we saw the point of view of the female artists, right? And I feel like that there was a big sort of lack in so many male artists in that space, but there were, weren't a lot of female artists. It was like Evie Queen early on, and there was like a gigantic gap until like the new artists now, like Nati Natasha, Carol G, Becky G, sort of blooming. So I developed a series with YouTube Originals that really, um, tells the story and the point of view of girls in the Latin urban space. I love it. Girl power. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.